Hi everyone, welcome back to Average Fitness, fitness tips for the average person, and today is Tuesday the 23rd of February 2021. Last night, Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced the roadmap out of lockdown, the roadmap out of coronavirus and into summer 2021, and almost instantly there was memes everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, etc about um, people basically saying, my summer body will not be ready in time. I didn't anticipate that would be able to do this, that, and the other by then. Um, so I talk about that with a pinch of salt, as I'm sure many of you did. Um, what I would say is, if you genuinely believe that this summer's not gonna be great because you've let yourself go in the last year, which I'm sure everybody has, um, let me just say now, your friends and family that haven't seen you for a long time, your loved ones that you're looking forward to seeing and holding, you know, embracing as you, when you, uh, when you can, they will not care if you've put on a stone in the last 12 months. They will just be happy to see you, all right? So take everything that I'm about to say with a pinch of salt because no matter how you look, that is not gonna define how you how you will feel when you see your loved ones and how they will feel when you see you. I'm sure it's gonna be a, a fantastic summer for everyone. Even if the weather's awful, we're still gonna love the summer. We're all gonna take every opportunity we can to see loved ones and do things that we've been unable to do for the last 12 months. However, if you are looking to improve your physical health and you are looking to get a little bit fitter, maybe drop a couple of pounds that you've, uh, you've gained over the last lockdown, then I'm gonna give you a few quick tips on how to do that. There's basically three ways you can approach the situation. Number one, create a calorie deficit by dieting. Now, diet is a bit of a funny word that I don't really like using, but basically what I mean by that is, Every day you burn a certain amount of calories. Your body will burn a certain amount of calories depending on what you're doing. And you'll offset that by eating a certain amount of calories. When you gain weight, you've basically eaten more calories than you've burned. When you lose weight, you've burned more calories than you've eaten. It really is that simple. I know it sounds like that sounds like some sort of wizardry where you know there must be more to it than that. There isn't. That that is literally it. The trouble is, not many people know how many calories they've burned, and not many people know how many calories they've consumed. And the reason is it changes on a daily basis and there's hundreds of different variables. So what I would encourage you to do is download a calorie tracking app, for example, MyFitnessPal. I'm sure there's lots of others as well, but that's the really popular one. And put in as much information as you can. So when you first set it up, put in your height, put in your, your weight, your date of birth, male or female, etc., etc., and put in your activity level. Be honest with yourself. It's no good saying that you're a very active person if you simply aren't. That's not gonna benefit everybody, all right? So what you wanna do is put in all that information and then every single piece of food or drink that you have, input that into the app on a daily basis. It does take some getting used to, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. You can save meals in there as well to make it a bit quicker. It's very, very easy to use once you get the hang of it. What will happen is, you'll see that um, when, when you first put in all of your information, height, weight, etc., it'll give you your maintenance calories. So let's say, for example, your height is five foot eight and you're about 11 stones. So that's pretty much what I am. And my maintenance calories are 2,500-ish, all right? And that's because I have a fairly active job on my feet quite a lot throughout the day and I'm lifting and carrying things. So if I'm looking to lose weight, all I've got to do is consume less than 2,500 calories on a daily basis, on average. So if you are looking to lose, let's say a pound a week, you maybe take three or 400 calories off that. Try and stick to about 2,100 to 2,200 every single day over a period of time and you will lose that weight. If you're looking to gain weight, obviously you would have more calories. The second way in which you can you can you know look to get a little bit leaner, lose a few pounds, is create a calorie deficit by exercising more, by moving more. So instead of eating less and you know consuming fewer calories, consume the same amount of calories but actually burn more by exercising on a regular basis or by walking to the you know walking to work instead of taking the car or whatever it is, um, and that will then create that deficit that we talked about. The third way to lose weight and to, to get into better shape is actually to combine the first two ways together. And that's the most effective and that's the way that I would strongly recommend. So, if you've worked out that your maintenance calories are 2,500 and you want to lose a pound a week, um, I would strongly recommend you don't look to lose too much weight too quickly because that's not sustainable. So, a pound a week is about where you want to be um, if, that's, if you're kind of a, a little bit heavier than you would like to be rather than, you know, clinically obese or what have you. So if let's again say that your maintenance calories are 2,500, what you wanna do is consume around 2,200 a day, for example, and look to exercise a few times a week as well, whether it be three times a week for half an hour, or once a day for 10 minutes, or whatever you wanna do. And I'm gonna show you a quick workout that I think will be very effective for most people later on in the video. But that's it, really. There's no, there's no kind of magic formula. It really is that simple. Eat a little bit less, move a little bit more, and you will lose the weight over a period of time. Like I say, 
looking to lose weight too quickly or get shredded from, you know, from being 30% body fat down to 10% body fat in the space of six weeks, not gonna happen. And even if you could achieve that, it's not sustainable. So strongly recommend sticking to a simple diet plan, a simple workout routine, and looking to lose the weight slowly and over a, um, a longer period of time. We've got a few months, it's only February, you've got a few months to get into shape um, before the summer comes around. So like I say, hopefully that's useful. Um, take everything that we're saying with a pinch of salt because as I'm sure you're aware, everybody who you're, you're looking forward to seeing is going to be in pretty much the same boat. Not many people have, um, not many people have uh, worked out regularly throughout, um, throughout the last 12 months and certainly I'm sure that 99% of people will be absolutely delighted to see you no matter what shape you're in um, and the other 1% just, just sack them off. And I'm not interested in, in people who judge you by, uh, by the way you look. So hopefully that was useful and I'm gonna show a quick, uh, quick workout which hopefully you can, um, you can do at home, minimal equipment. Um, and what I would say with that is the workouts, keep it simple, it's not complicated. Do a few press ups, do a few squats, do a plank for 30 seconds, etc., and do that on a regular basis and that will help get you into shape. Okay, so as promised, quick home workout, which you can do every day or you can do twice a week or any number in between. And the reason for that is all of the exercises are kind of interchangeable and adaptable depending on your current fitness level and, and how hard you want to go. So for example, if you're only going to be able to work out two or three times a week, you might do five sets of eight of each exercise. Whereas if you're working out every day, you might only do three sets of eight or three sets of six or whatever, all right? There's a couple of bits of equipment that I would highly recommend you have a look at. One of them in particular is this thing here. I've had this for about nine years and it's been absolutely invaluable. It's just a pull-up bar that you can get from places like Argos, Wish.com and a bunch of others, ranging from about 25 to 35 pounds. What it does is it sits on the door frame in your house. So the door frame sits there and you use this bit to pull on um, to, to do some pull-ups, which Pull-ups are quite a difficult exercise for a beginner, so I'm going to demonstrate a couple of ways you can make them a little bit easier, a couple of ways you can start off and you know aim towards being able to do full pull-ups. But if you're unable to have, get access to this, if they're sold out or if you simply don't have any cash spare or whatever, or if they're just too hard and even the easier versions are too difficult for you, there is a different exercise which you can do instead, which is not as effective, but it's not bad compared to you know if you don't have access to that piece of equipment. So I'm going to show you that now and all you're gonna need for it is something to rest on. I'm gonna use a chair. Basically something where you can place your knee and your hand in this sort of position. So whether it be a chair or a bench or whatever. Um, and you're also gonna need something to lift which is fairly heavy. So I'm gonna be using a bucket that I used to wash the car with, filled with a backpack which has bottles of water in there. So I basically put as much weight into the, the backpack as I can. Um, and you can do the same using tins of beans, bottles of water, nip down on the beach and grab a few rocks, whatever you can, and get something fairly heavy, because this is quite an easy exercise to do, so it does need to be heavy in order to work the muscles, all right? So what you're gonna do is place your knee on one corner, place your hand on the other, and you're gonna get your weight ready, and you're simply gonna bend at the elbow, keep your entire body rigid, bend at the elbow, bringing the weight up until your elbow is about here, and then you're gonna come back down. Nice and slow, nice and steady. So my entire body is, is, is rigid. I'm not using momentum at all. The nice, slow, controlled pace. And this exercise works your upper back or your lat muscles and also your biceps as well. And then make sure you do the same amount of reps on the other arm. So if you don't have access to a pull-up bar or a pull-up are just too advanced for you, this is the perfect exercise to do. It's called a single arm row and it does work the upper back, the lats, and also the biceps as well. The other two exercises I would recommend for this workout are press-ups and good old-fashioned squats. So there's a bunch of videos out there showing how to maintain correct form in these exercises, and I'm sure you've, you've either heard it from me or many others before, but I'm just gonna run through the basics. When you're doing your squats, you want your feet to be shoulder width apart or slightly wider, and you want your feet to be pointed directly forward or slightly out to the side. Either is absolutely fine, just depends on your particular physique as to what's gonna be best for you. You're gonna bend your knees and you're gonna stick your backside as far back as you can and keep your chest nice and high. So when you bend your knees, you come right down, but your knees and your hips are in line, that's the goal, but your chest stays nice and high. You don't wanna be coming right forward like this. It's very difficult if you're not used to it, to be able to do that. And one of the easier ways to, um, to help you with your form is to elevate your heels slightly so that your toes touch on the floor, but your heels are slightly raised. So for example, I use this piece of folded cardboard, which is fairly thin, but it's just, it's about probably an inch and a half thick, but it's just enough to bring my heels off the floor 
so that when I come down, it's very, very easy to keep correct form and to keep my chest nice and high. Keep your core tight as you're going, and then you're gonna do a few reps of those. So squats have massive benefits, obviously, especially for your legs and your glutes, your backside, but also for your core and for overall strength and stability. The other exercise is press-ups. Again, I'm sure you've been shown how to do press-ups a million times, but I'll just run through it one more time. What you wanna do is have your hands directly underneath your shoulders, keep your core nice and tight, keep your body rigid, and your elbows go backwards towards your heels, not out to the side. So many press people do press-ups like this, you don't wanna do that. What you wanna do is bend your elbows back, and keep your core tight. If that's too difficult for you, and obviously it's a fairly advanced exercise to do a lot of, either drop your knees down, keep your core tight as well. Your knees come behind your hips, so you don't want them in line like this. You want them much further back. Keep your core tight, keep your form correct, and press in a nice, slow, and controlled manner. If that is too difficult, which again, if you're just starting out, it certainly can be, Use the kitchen bench or something similar kind of height and sturdiness to rest against and have your body at a sort of 45 degree angle. The greater the angle, the more difficult the exercise becomes and keep your core tight. I know I've said it about eight times already in this video. I will continue to say it in every exercise. Always keep your core tight. Bend, bring your elbows back and try and keep your chest engaged as you're going um, and do as many as you can. Those three exercises cover every major muscle in the body. So squats will obviously work your backside, your legs, like I say, your core, press-ups, chest, back of your arms, tricep as well, and your core also, and pull-ups, obviously work your back and your biceps, that pulling motion. Um, so basically, we've we'll covered the entire body. Once you're done, finish with a plank. Now the plank is either a press-up position or down on your forearms like so, keeping your heels, your hips, and your shoulders in a line. So you're not dipping your hips down or sticking your backside up like this. You're staying in a line, and you're gonna try and stay as still as you can for as long as you can. Anywhere upwards of 20 seconds and you will start to notice that your core starts to burn. And that's because those are the muscles that you're using to stay still. Those three exercises alone with the plank at the end, a few sets of a few reps every day or every couple of days or even just twice a week, whatever you can. And that will help you to burn those calories, to lose those pounds, to get into better shape for summer 2021. So if you are using this pull-up bar, if you have managed to get hold of one, there's a couple of different hand positions you can use. Personally, I like to have my hands on these bars that are sticking out. And what you're gonna to wanna to do for pull-ups is kind of get your hands into position, get your grip right, lower yourself down so your arms are pretty much straight with your elbows off the lock. Lift your feet off the floor, get yourself nice and steady, and then pull yourself up and back down nice and slowly. Try not to drop down quickly and keep your core tight. Now, if pull-ups are too difficult for you, there's a few ways you can get there, all right, depending on where your current, uh, your current fitness level is. Number one, start with your hands in position, and then you're gonna to jump to the top of the rep, all right? So you're gonna to jump to here, and then you're gonna try and hold on as long as you can, bring yourself down nice and slowly, bend your knees, and then let go, all right? Take a little rest, do it again. Take a little rest, do it again. Keep doing it four or five times per workout, all right? And that will help grow the strength in your biceps and your upper back. The other way you can do that is lower down, keep your elbows off lock, so stay at this position, and try and stay there for as long as you can. And this also works your core quite significantly, but it is gonna help stretch your back and activate those muscles, and then have a rest once again. Take a little rest between each one, do it again. So whether you do one from the top where you lower down slowly and then one in position and then, you know, give a little rest and, and do it again. Um, the third way you can, that you can progress up to full um, pull-ups is to simply, basically use your feet to give you an extra boost, all right? So, put yourself down, but keep your feet on the floor and then you're gonna pull yourself up, but also use your, your legs and your feet kind of take your weight. What you need to do really is engage your arms as much as you can and try not to use your legs as much as you can. So you're kind of, you need to kind of do it yourself. There's no one who can kind of guide you with that. Um, but use your feet for balance and that little bit of extra boost that you need depending on your current strength. Um, and that will help you to get to a point where you can do, even if it's just one pull, um, and then you can obviously make, make real gains from there. 
So as I said before, the workout is completely interchangeable depending on your current situation, your current fitness level, um, and your you know your goals and your time that you have. So if you're working out you know twice a week, then obviously it's going to be slightly different to if you're working out seven times a week. What I would say on that is the more frequently you're working out, the lower number of sets you can potentially do. So for example, if you can only commit to working out two or three times a week then I would strongly recommend doing five, six, seven sets of five plus reps, if that's within your current, you know, your ability, depending on your current fitness level. If you're working out every single day, then by all means only do three sets, you know? So over time, then, you know, you're gonna be doing more reps in total because you're working out every day. But again, you can change the workouts up. If you wanna do 20 sets every single day, that's fine, absolutely, you know, go for it. Um, just be careful that you are stretching afterwards, maintaining, you know, good levels of hydration, etc. because you don't want to be too sore the next day and then put it off and etc. etc. So if you want to reach out for um, specific um, input on your exact situation or if you just want to change up the workout a little bit, um, then by all means reach out and we'll, we'll talk through your current, your current circumstances and we'll see what we can do to suggest other alternatives. But there is, whilst there is some science that says that doing the same workout over and over again has a limited um, potential for gains in the long term, that doesn't really apply to a two, three, four month set of time. If you do five sets of five of each of these exercises with a 30 second plank at the end, three or four times a week for the next four months, you will not see diminished returns as you go. Eventually, your body will get used to those exercises and you'll have to change it up a little bit to promote more muscle growth. But just doing those exercises for, for you, like I say, 12 to, 12 to 15 weeks, is you're not going to encounter that at all. So it is going to be very useful, but obviously you can get a little bit bored doing the same exercises. So if you want to reach out, then by all means, we'll talk through some alternatives. Um, there is a, a lot more content on the YouTube channel for you know hints and tips for the average person. Obviously, there's lots of other YouTube content out there, but all I would say in terms of advice for the working out for the next few months is just keep it as simple as you can. Keep it as something that is easy to follow and you're gonna you know you're gonna actually do because it's no good coming up with a fantastic workout plan if you're just not gonna stick with it over a long period of time. Consistency is always better than intensity. I've said it a thousand times, I will keep saying it every day. Consistency is better than intensity. Five sets of five press ups is better than doing a hundred different exercises once and then giving up after a month. So have fun with it. Hopefully we can all uh, we all look forward to a, a much better summer. We can enjoy it together, and hopefully this year will be much better than, than the last year that we've all kind of struggled through. Um, reach out for any any particular questions you have. And until next time, take it easy.